Hello everybody and welcome back to the Two Nights Podcast. As always, I'm joined by my friend Timmy Long. Hi, hey everyone. And this week we have a very special guest. We have a special guest every week, but this time <laughs> yeah. it's a very special guest, um, Georgina Cooney. And you're going to share, you've kindly um, offered to share your story, which many women would be able to relate mm-hmm. to. Um, but before we get into it, who are you and where are you from? I am, so I'm Georgina Cooney. Not George Clooney. No, not George Clooney, no. <laughs> uh, all go- yeah, I'm originally from Kilwart in North Cork, but yeah. I'm living in Whitegate now. I'm married two years to David Cooney, and I have a little girl, Rua. She's 16 months. Rua is Irish for red. It is. Yeah. It's a fox as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's Mata a Rua. beautiful name. Yeah, uh, it's Rua. nice. Yeah. yeah. So she was born in l- September, so we wanted to kind of yeah. autumn. I name. think we should start calling Rowan, Rowan Rua. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rua. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's boy girl. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So it can be boy girl. Yeah. Yeah. But um, what was it like growing up in Kilworth? Quiet? Yeah, grand. We're farmers, like yeah. farmer family. With so. proper farmers, like proper farmers, with cattle yeah. and pigs and things. Well, no, ma- mainly cows. Yeah. Milking. So Go away. yeah. So I, I have four brothers, one sister. So is it a tough childhood growing up in a farm like ah, that? Ah, mighty crack. Is it? Great crack. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she'd be flying around in mud and... Do you know, no worries. I know. Great so crack. You're like a, a, I suppose, pad in the pump, you're like pig and shit. That's it, <laughs> yeah. There's always something yeah. to do on the farm, isn't there? What yeah. Is like? No, it's yeah. good. Like, I loved it because mm. I loved animals and, mm. you know, running yeah. around and, the, like, freedom of it. Yeah. Like, you know, we could just go down the fields and get lost and yeah. wouldn't come back for hours, yeah. going to the neighbours, get fed. <laughs> yeah, you know like, yeah that's all it was. Really. It was like yeah. ourselves yeah. as well. Like we didn't, we were from the city, yeah. but in the north, in northwest Cork City, you're like the city centre was right next to you. But on the other side, of then is Blarney, Clohine, Kerry Pike, yeah. and the Lee Fields and the woods, mm-hmm. and you know your uh, Killeen's is at the back of us. You know, so we had the country on one side and the city on the other side. So yeah. we'd have been able to relate with that mm-hmm. own heading away yeah. for the day. And I don't want to do the farming when I was young. Yeah. We'd go up to Lee Valley and we'd take the spuds out of the fields out there and we'd bring them home. Probably <laughs> <laughs> 10, 12, 13. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Bring them up home yeah. and sell them to the neighbours. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> Entrepreneurs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But um, you have a few siblings. You're from Kilworth. Did yeah. you go through school? And I did, yeah. yeah. Went to school in Kilworth and went to secondary school in Fermoy. And then went to college in Cork, moved up, went wild. What did you do <laughs> in college? Uh, did graphic design. Didn't know what I wanted fancy. to do, though. Mm. Yeah, I was just like, oh. yeah. And one of my mates, my other mates, she picked uh, CIT as well. I had no idea what I wanted to do. Yeah. Do you know, you're 18. I know. Sure, we, were, we just went my lula tools. up there. Like yeah. we, had, we stayed, we moved up there. Okay. So, sure, we had a great time. Were you, you living on campus? No. <laughs> living in Glasheen Road oh, yeah, just yeah, up yeah. by C.C. Young's yeah. so I was in college for about three years I quit I gave up after uh, doing three years and no all. no I gave up the first year did it till April couldn't do the exams I was mm. like nah and so I gave it mm. up and then I started a new course in the college com in the September so I sure I, I actually didn't know what I wanted to do like mm. I was just having like hanging out with my friends and stuff like having a great time I yeah. suppose <laughs> when when you're that age and you're living in the countryside all your life yeah, yeah. around your parents and then all of a sudden you're going into the city you're living inside in your own place you're going to oh complete a- freedom adventure, like, yeah exactly you know, you're going to do the ball, yeah. ball. I so wor- I kind of didn't really take on the whole college thing yeah. you know I was working with a when I was working in homeless services there I was working with a girl from Bear Island and uh, she was telling me when she went up to CIT, um, so first time ever on a bus. Mm. <laughs> no way. Yeah, <laughs> first time, and she, you know, anxiety around all the people, and yes. you know, it's just like different, like. Yeah. I know, no Kilworth is not Bear Island, but yeah. still, you're from a small rural area, and you come into the city. CIT oh, is yeah, a huge campus. Uh, the, the college, yeah. the college scene is big, um, yeah. and there's a lot of alcohol and parties and yeah. I know people over in Glasheen Road and they're not happy with the students oh stop yeah, yeah exactly and did you find it hard to I suppose settle into student life because of the party scene um I probably did I was just yeah. course was the wrong course uh, it could have been a bit of both mm. I'd say like mm. but definitely the freedom of being able to party and yeah. you know mm. just have it, have fun 
and I really, really lived it up when I. Yeah. <laughs> I often say, I often thought, you know, when I was on UCC campus, you know, as a mature student, like when you're a mature student, you know what you're there for, you have your goals and you're working towards them, and that's mm. it. I mean, often looking at the young people, I mean, how the fuck do they get through college? Yeah. There's so many distractions, yeah. the women and party and exactly. then drugs and everything, you know? How do yeah. they actually go to the exams in the mornings? How do they get through their assignments when there's so many distractions, you know? So, yeah. um, I think wha- what I noticed out the CIT, um, I think they scrape it through up until third year. But what I noticed then in fourth year is like, they, they just pulled it out of the bag and mm. some fellas mm. that just scrope their way through for three years are pulling out one once. Mm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Between seventy and and, and a hundred. And I say, oh, what the fuck? And there's me, my ones have to drop in, <laughs> you know, because it's actually getting harder. Yeah. yeah. But um yeah, I think the maturity levels go up oh, then as well. Definitely. Like after three or four years, you know. I definitely wasn't mm. mature enough to be mm. in college. You mm. know I wasn't. Yeah. I was working part time then in the gate cinema oh yeah, yeah, yeah so sure they used to have in the mornings then like they'd have the run throughs yeah like back in jeez when was that 2004 or around that so it was all film mm. so they had to run them through and sure i didn't go into college any thursday because it was thursday mornings they'd show all the films before they came out on the friday so i'd be in there for the day watching the films i loved it <laughs> <laughs> same time my life <laughs> Oh. And what did you do oh. in the College of Commerce then? I did uh, PR and advertising, and I did nothing with that either. And what happened <laughs> after that? I there's no fell such thing as waste. Job. There's no such thing as wasted learning, by the way. Yeah, that's like good. do a course, you didn't yeah. do anything with it. You still learned a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, so, but anyway. Yeah, hopefully anyway. But yeah. I always had an interest in media, and you know the yeah. media side of it. So it might stand to me yet. Mm. Like, exactly, you know? exactly. But um. What did I do then? Oh, I went to America on a J1. Went to San Diego for the summer. Like Explain what a J1 is to people like us that would never have gotten there any J1s. Yeah, I know. So it's uh, so if you go to college, it's um you get the opportunity to go to America to work. So they give you get a work visa mm. for America. Okay. Um so it's it's kind of like a three month three month job yeah. like. Yeah. So there was a gang of us and we said we'd go to San Diego for the Lovely. summer. And this was kind of the last one before I kind of finished. I finished up with college. But I think around then, around, two t- around that time as well, it was kind of the, the thing that was done. Mm-hmm. Do you know, people would be like, oh yeah, go off to go to America there for three yeah. months. <laughs> yeah. And how was so it? So mighty, brilliant. Sure, yeah. I, my bag got robbed the first day I was over there passport oh, and the whole shebang gone oh, stop. Uh, so I worked illegally for the three months over there selling sunglasses and t-shirts on the side of a beach grand lucky lucky <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was one of those I was yeah. one of those Fair play sure. yeah, yeah sure all we wanted was back. all we wanted was a bit of money for mm. a couple of cans and mm, yeah. do you know it was great. You know, there was 13 of us inside in a two bedroom house oh, yeah. like yeah. Do you ever see the video of <laughs> Do you ever see the video of the Lucky Lucky in uh he yeah. in Spain? He knows all the places and I know. Oh, I yeah, know what I've visions of you there now. Some, Seneg- <laughs> some Senegalese guy over on the beach of San Diego and you're trying to and you know oh, all the towns in Senegal. I was <laughs> scalded. Oh my sure God. the sun yeah. oh, I was scalded. Sure I came back and I was like nearly a yeah. black woman nearly yeah, yeah. and mother was like, Jesus, and it was about two stone heavier. <laughs> my, and what happened when you got back? I uh, got back then, got a job in FCI. What's it's that? a it's a factory in in Formoy. So I kind of fell into that job and was just kind of an operator inside there. Mm-hmm. So then after that, um FCI the kind of the the what you call it? The crash came. Two thousand and seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So FCI then was it was kind of one of the first um companies to close. So I was there two years. So I was one of the last people into the company, so they were letting people go, but mm. they were given redundancy. Mm-hmm. So I got I got a couple of grand anyway. So nice. me and my two buddies, my cousin Jackie, and another good friend of mine, Grace, three of us said we'd feck off. We we were going to we went to South America. Oh nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> went yeah. to South America and we went to uh, New Zealand and Australia. 
Okay. So we got a one-way ticket. We said, good luck. Yeah, see, yeah, yeah. see you later. I'd love to go to South America. Mm. Oh, it's a great spot. Brilliant. We spent three months there. Mines, the mines, them, them old buildings and stuff yeah. in the rainforest. I'd yeah. love to see all that. Ah, uh, it's a great, yeah. great continent. They're mad, mad about the Irish. Like, yeah. absolutely love us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what part did you just do a few, a few different countries in we South America? We did, yeah, we kind of did a couple of, couple of places in each country. Like, we just, we bust a yeah. lot of it. Like, we just got there and did overnight buses. We did Brazil, uh, Argentina, Peru, Bolivia, Chile. Um, to save? Yeah, yeah sure. Like, you you need it. to have your wits about you. Like, yeah, like, like you wouldn't be going up into the favelas no, of in not. Rio de Janeiro by yeah. yourself. Like, yeah, yeah. like we did a, a tour, but it was an organized tour with um, a person from the favela. And it was unreal. Like, there was kids, like, about nine years old, which machine guns like do you know walking past us and we're mm. going oh, like, do you know it's, it's crazy, completely it? different world like mm. yeah and but there's, no, there's, there's lawless is it yeah but they have their own law kind of yeah. within themselves there do you know yeah. and All then of it. you went to <laughs> australia then new zealand yeah we went to new zealand first and yeah. for spent a year there and we were working and living and then we went to australia and we we went to Sydney first just for a week and then we actually settled in Melbourne. So Melbourne is where we were setting up. Melbourne is meant to be a rough enough city, is it? Uh, sure, I think anywhere is. I do you suppose, know, yeah. you can find a rough anywhere. I just remember watching a couple of but documentaries about the, the gang scene, underbelly. the drug scene and all yeah. this in Melbourne. Mm. You know? yeah. And I remember thinking, like, fucking hell, I thought Melbourne was like, yeah. do you know, quieter, do you know, but that's yeah. actually mad. Do you know what stuck up for me? Uh, about Australia was there was a lot of Irish men being killed from street fights over there. Mm. Mm. Yeah, you know, you'd always hear one every few every year or a few every year. Yeah, you know it's just it's it's like <coughs> the Irish are after drink. We can be mad and a bit messy, but I'd yeah. say the Australians could be fairly tough as well after a few drinks. Like they are, they are like in fairness, mm. and you they're, know, and they're a bit being co- competitive. Mm. Yeah, and they're a bit arrogant as well. Like, uh, do you know what they that's are? The British, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> We're going joke. deep here, lads. <laughs> can want it down the truth, you know, <laughs> small bit, I please. Kid, kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop! But there's a bit of Word. everything in the Aussies, like. Yeah, a lot of the Aussies over there would have Irish ancestry yeah. too, and they kind of treat the Irish a bit like yeah. we're second class a bit over there. Like, mm-hmm. do you know? Yeah, like we we kind of do the the crappy jobs yeah. in Oz, yeah. and but like I loved it over there. Mm-hmm. But just mainly our group of friends and everything were all expats. Like they're all Irish and English and mm-hmm. American, and like I only had a couple of actual Aussie friends. There's a lot of um, they Cork, kind of stay away. There's a lot of Cork and Irish people, a lot of Cork people in Melbourne that mm. listen to this podcast. Yeah, is there? So hi, yeah, oh. they, 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 they make guess. their presence known. Oh, a lot of people know, like yourself, that emigrated <laughs> during the time of the recession and mm. ended up just setting up shop over there. You know, yeah, and have kids and that now. It is and good. They just like uh, listen to the Cork accent because it reminds me of home. So hi everybody ah. in uh, <laughs> Australia, New Zealand, <laughs> and, uh, and beyond. So um. That's well, it. What, what was it like over there and what was the crowd? Was the big party scene there too for you? Yeah, big party scene. There's a place called Revolver in Melbourne, in the city. And it's a 24-hour nightclub. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't close at all. I so you could Revolver. go in there and you could be in there, like, you could be in there for a couple of days. <laughs> yes. if, you want, if you wanted to be, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just doesn't close. Like, it doesn't open. close, yeah. It doesn't close. Like, there's a lot of security and stuff there, like, but... Mm-hmm. People can be in there for days. I would have loved something like that back in my drinking days. <laughs> oh, yeah. Trust me, I would have been barred after the first night. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I still liked it. Uh, it so wouldn't have been revolver for Timmy at all. Revolver, revolver, single shot. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but it is like it's a it's a serious party city. Yeah. Do you know, like I was twenty seven, I was twenty six, twenty seven. I was in there, so I was kind of you know you're in the height of. The good times and mm. having crack and you yeah. know, yeah. And was that so. your local? Uh, quite, well, like we lived in St Kilda, so St Kilda, the revolver was up Chapel Street, kind of about half an hour away from St Kilda. Yeah. So St Kilda was mainly my base. Um, 
it was kind of an Irish hub as well. Like, yeah. but I was working in a bar there and I did painting and decorating. That's what I was doing over in in Melbourne. Cool. Working with all the boys. Yeah. Happy days on the yeah, sites. George. Yeah. <laughs> I hear I hear it's meant to be good money, but the cost of living is very high. Yeah. Yeah. Good money and like you could work and work and but you know, you'd you'd make a nice bit like but yeah, yeah the cost of living is high. Yeah. But it is a good life over there. Mm-hmm. Do you know? You have the beach and so you're yeah. do you feel like it doesn't feel real like do yeah. you know the time I spent over there it kind of didn't it's like feel real like set of home and away or something yeah do you know you're kind of mm. like I knew I wasn't staying there in the long term as well because mm. I just it's a bit too far away from family and stuff yeah. so I like two years I had a two year visa for there like yeah, so nice. yeah. yeah and you know like so we've set the scene now of who you are where you're from how you ended up there yeah. And you were sexually assaulted over there. Yeah. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So I was living in Melbourne about a year at the time and I came back home for Christmas um, in 2009. So I hadn't been home in two years because of the traveling and stuff. So yeah. had a great time when I came home, met, you know, everyone and got to see my mom and had a great time. So... Went back to Melbourne then and I was going out celebrating my birthday. So my birthday is the 20th of January. So I came back and we were going out that weekend for birthday celebrations. Mm. So we have we had a good gang, great gang of us over there, like a lot of um, lads from Dublin now and like good mm. Irish crowd and whoever. So like we started off at about two o'clock in the day. So drinking, like, so wine, beer, um, mm. anything I get my hands on. Really, like, I, I, if I get going, I'm kind of like hollow like legs. Like if boat. Yeah, mm. hollow legs, like, yeah. you know. Uh, so, um, yeah, <laughs> drinking all day and sure getting drinks off people then, you know. And mm. there's this shot over in Australia and it's called Agua. And it's, it's like liquid cocaine, basically. Um, it's green and it's yeah so I had about I don't know about six of those or something no idea so absolutely bananas in pajamas mm. but my drunkness I can hold my I'm, I'm not a I wouldn't be a, a floppy drunk or anything mm. I'd be a hyper drunk so like only my close close friends would know when I'm actually mm. kind of blacked out because mm. my body just keeps going like and I'd be chatting do you know but nothing's there yeah like so uh we ended up in a nightclub anyway on Gray Street and I'm familiar with that area as well and my mates were upstairs so that was grand but I kind of blacked out around I'd say it was about half two was my last kind of recollection and I remember talking to the barman was actually, he was an actor that was in, in Home and Away. <laughs> so it actually is like living in Home is, and Away. Yeah, so. it is. <laughs> it is. So this fella, he was the cop in, in Home and Away. Is he handsome? Uh, he's all right. Like, but he's Zazzy. Like, like, yeah. Zazzy. <laughs> Zazzy. Uh, so that was grand. That was kind of my last recollection until I woke up in an apartment that I didn't know. And... There was a man, like 65 year old, like old man, and he was giving me over sex. Mm. And I was just like, I just froze. I was like, do you know the way I was coming? Like, sure, I was coming, I was still drunk, do you know? But I was trying to compute what was happening. What was happening? And I was just, I kind of woke up, and it was like a, a double bed, and my legs are on the ground, and I'd kind of a, a dress on like you know nothing fucking just a dress or whatever but it was up around my torso and I started to god it was up here like I was looking down on myself and I was like what the fuck mm. what's going on? what I was like George this is you like mm. do you know it clicked in my brain I was like I'm, we have to do something like do you yeah. know it was like mm. I'm I was there I didn't know the man. I didn't like he was sixty. He was well into sixties, like bald head. Yeah. That's all I saw. And You're I was fifty years like, old, wouldn't you? Like, what the hell is going on here? Like, mm. but the 
complete out of body experience like but that's actually common for people experiencing yeah. sexual yeah. assault that mm. out of body experience that mm, no, I just couldn't believe looking at yeah. the situation it's happening to me like I was there mm. going what that's you mm. I was, like practically pointing down at myself going so I don't know how long that he was actually there do you know because I don't know just time kind of yeah. when gets kind when of altered <coughs> or whatever do you know when you're drunk like that anyway yeah it's, it's, like, sure, I was like, who know. is this? Like, why are, some, where am yeah. I? And it I kind of felt yeah. like I was in a movie then for yeah. a bit, because it was like a a bed a bedside apartment, so everything was there. Do you know, I could see a door, and I was like, even my heart was going there now. Like, mm-hmm. um, I could see a door. So your man kind of came up off me, and didn't really say anything, and I was trying to just like, I kind of you know. I was wide awake then, like, and said nothing. And I I was like, he got, kind of got up and went over. There was kind of a kitchenette here. And he, I don't know, did he say something to me or, but it was kind of all muffly. But all I could, all I could do was see the door. And I was like, George, it was like, internally, I was like, George, get the fuck out. Go, like, mm. do you know, this, like, if that door is locked or if it's, if it's locked, we'll do something else. Like, I, was, I would have beat shit out of him, I'd mm. say, if I had to. Mm. I would have done something anyway. But, like, I had no shoes on. I had no bag. I had no phone. Like, my knickers was up beside me on the bed. And before I got up, I was like, I actually picked it up. And I was like, you're not fucking, you're not mm. keeping that. Mm. Do you know, I was like, fuck off. Like, mm. who do you think you are? Do you know what was yeah. all going through my head? Did he just talk, a yeah. mile a minute. Uh, he, I don't think he, I don't know, did he fucking say, do you want a cup of tea or something? I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Because he was going over to the kitchen Was part. he was he? Yeah, I think he was, yeah. Yeah. Um, Kind of a mixed, I don't know, it's kind of Greek Aussie. Oh, yeah. Like I found that out afterwards. I, I'd but, say the fear must have been unbelievable. Yeah. Like he could have, he, he could have, he could have been violent, but you like, yeah, exactly. And you do hear about a uh, tourist and backpackers and that uh, going missing in the bush and being, you know, there was predators in Australia, like exactly. in, in other countries. Like, there oh, is too. sure, I was there in my head and I was like, I'm going to be a st- statistic. Mm. Do you know, I saw my mother, I was like, oh god, so, like it was literally all going through your head. But mm. I was like, at yeah. that moment, I was like, I have to get out. I have to go. Just get away. Like, you know, in Australia as well, they have those kind of double doors. So kind of a fly net. And yeah. I was like, okay, I'm just going to pull that or else I'll have to run through it. But luckily the door was open. And um, I just I ran out. Like, I just literally got up off the bed. Sure, I was thinking, I'd say it was, you know, I was yeah. half pissed anyway. Yeah. But... Um, ran to the door, door was open, ran out, didn't know where the fuck I was, kept running, saw steps, ran. This is about, it was about half 11 in the morning or half 12, half 12 on a Sunday morning and ran out. I was in a car park, didn't know where it was, just ran. There was an arch, kept running, uh, no shoes, sure looked like a fucking mad woman. Like. Did you come after you? <laughs> no, no. I just, I got out onto, it was like a, I went under an arch and came out onto a street and there was a good bit of traffic and stuff. So I was trying to, mm. like, flag down a taxi man and I was hysterical now. Hysterical at this stage because I think it hit me what happened and, d- like, I didn't know if I was actually raped either, yeah. do you know? Yeah. I was, so you don't know how long he could be been at Yeah, you exactly, you like, because mm. the last thing I remembered was kind of being in a nightclub <laughs> to being in this mm. man's house and was ugh, I'm like chattering. I know you like to see the nerves and yeah, yeah that's speaking okay. like that's okay. It's yeah. normal to things that like yeah. this, you know. Like, you're speaking well anyway. Mm. So <laughs> well, no, you're speaking very well. And like that's eleven years ago. Mm. Mm. Do you know? Yeah. And you did you did you flag somebody down? Yeah, eventually like um Got out there and there was taxis passing and sure there was ones and they were like, I'm not picking up this freaking mm. lunatic. But I'd say about two or three taxis kind of passed in and fella pulled in. 
and sure i was shake and like and he was like are you okay and i was like no yeah. <laughs> so i'm not um i was like can you br- i didn't know where i was either like so i was like can you bring me to st kilda and he was like yeah you know he was actually so lovely he actually yeah. reminded me like of a, a car taxi man you know yeah. do you know like mm. your dad like yeah. coming in yeah. going i'll bring you home you yeah know, half langer like, yeah, to get sick yeah do you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um so thank god this fella actually took me home and i was like look i have no bag he saw i had no shoes or i had no shoes on me or and i was hysterical so i was like look if you get me to the house i my friend will pay like and he was there your grand he was there so i didn't know where he was coming from either i didn't mm. think to ask him and eventually got back got back to St Kilda so it was about one o'clock in the day went upstairs my mate was upstairs beefy he's one of my fellow friends like and sure I met him at the door and I was just he was like what's wrong with you and I was like I couldn't say it he's like Georgie all right and I was like no (laughs) And he was like, will I ring, will I ring Grace? And I, Grace, one of my mates that I was in the nightclub yeah. with, but lost her. And she arrived, she's like, George, we lost you last night. And I was like, I know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, mm-hmm. uh, no idea, shit like... story. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it was just so hard to believe when it happens to you. Yeah. Do you know, like, kind of anything, I suppose, it's when it happens to you, you're like, Oh, what the fuck like did you go to the police yeah yeah went straight, straight to away them. yeah straight away and what, where were they with you they were brilliant actually they were good excellent like the lads saw how they saw it was pretty fucked like yeah and then i just wanted to know What's what happened, happened? Yeah. do you know like so we went straight to the cops in st killa and they actually treated us brilliant from the get-go and um sure I went there and like when I got to the house I actually took off the dress and stuff because I felt yeah. fucking manked like but I kind of knew then that I couldn't have a shower because mm. just in case like from you know from watching all those fucking yeah because the forensics will want to examine you mm. yeah exactly and so did they? yeah yeah I had to go through did all that like went to the hospital and can't stop chattering it. That's okay. fine. Um, Without going into the gory details, yeah. what's the what's it like the, the forensic process? You know, for for women out there, I suppose that maybe have been in that situation but didn't want to go down the road. Yeah. Like, what, what's it like? Is it? Well, I uh, definitely tell people if it happens to anyone, go tell someone. Like, because it's not you can't get away with it. Like, mm. do you know? Like, I'd recommend anyone to. Just go to like the Cork Rape Crisis mm. Centre, or yeah. like we went straight to the cops, and they actually like I went and got the forensic thing done, and they actually left me alone for a day, so I could kind of get myself together. And I think it was the day after, like I'd go in and do a statement. So I was there for about six hours, I'd say, because I had to bring them through the whole day yeah. <laughs> from when I. From when I kind of started drinking, so they were looking at me and they were like, "Jesus Christ, how much?" Drink? Yeah, typical Irish <laughs> <They were> like, woman. <laughs> how much fucking drink you after? But they, like afterwards, actually, there was like, uh, this was a few months down the line, and the guards were like, they couldn't get over it, that I didn't have to be pumped because they said the amount my alcohol level was through the roof, like, mm. and. Oh, I was like, that was, yeah, crazy. Were you able to give a description of him? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was he arrested? Uh, yeah, we found him, like, we went um, through, so it was a mad old process, so about two weeks afterwards, two of the cops came over, and they were in plain clothes, and they took myself and Grace around my whole statement, so from where I started at two o'clock that day, they drove to the house I was at, we drove to everywhere that I'd been just to, they wanted to rejog, see if there was anything in my memory. Mm. And they 
were able to tell from how much the taxi men, because we never found that taxi men afterwards, but from the amount that Beefy paid him, they were able to see from St Kilda the radius of how far that would get you. So um, I remembered kind of hazily like that there was a big bridge. I remembered being in a bridge. Um, like that's how I must bring you back actually because how it actually ended up in your man's car was because I thought he was a taxi. Okay. So he had a kind of a yellowy car and he was parked outside the nightclub and all the taxis were there. So I thought I was actually getting into a taxi. Um, so that's how I actually ended but he up. he wasn't a taxi? No. no. Did he masquerade as a taxi or did you just jump in and he took you? I could have, I could have just jumped in, but like he, there was up the road from that nightclub, it's called uh, Gray Street and there it's kind of notorious for prostitution and stuff. Okay. So there'd be prostitutes and You could have ran into another creeps car I know, I know. I know, but, you know, you, you like, but nice I was, guy. it's so mad though, because, you know, like I was in my bubble as well, because you know the way you've, you've the place where you go out, like, you know, there's dangers there, yeah. but you don't, you don't think it's going to happen to you, basically. But um, that's how I ended up getting into his car, because there was CCTV footage of me coming out in a nightclub at five in the morning, bouncing out the door, no shoes. I'd like, so my shoes must have been left, I must have left them in the nightclub and my bag and everything was found in the nightclub. But like, I look fine, I look okay like, do you know what I mm, mean? Yeah. Like I wasn't thrown on the ground or anything yeah, like, yeah. but it kind of kills me because you know, my awareness is mm, totally yeah. gone. Like, it's and un- I, yeah. I would be quite uh, chatty, person like when i'm out i talk away to i talk away to anyone like yeah do you typical know? irish person really yeah we, like we talk to anybody yeah so mm. i kind of thought i in my head i was getting into a taxi and i remember being in the car then older and older men like and i was sitting in the front and i remember going over the big bridge and that was it then like i had nothing after that but they tracked down the guy based on the bridge yeah, so the bridge and from the 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 money, the tariff, you know, for mm, they were able to yeah. see whereabouts. So there's a place called Mooney Ponds and they drove out there, the cops did, and um, they're like, this is during the day now, like, so they're like, George, if you see anything, just say it, it's like anything at all. So we're passing, I kind of saw a red brick and saw a car park. And then I saw uh, kind of steps. I was like, I was like, let's, let's say pull in here. This kind of is looking familiar. And I saw an arch. Mm. I was like, oh God. I was like, oh, the anxiety yeah. was flying at this stage. So they, we parked up in the car park and they put a hood over me. So... So that if your man was out, he wouldn't know me or whatever. So went up the steps and I was like, oh, Jesus, this is it. Like mm. I was there going, that's his gaff down there. So he's in there. So they're like, all right, put us back into the car and went home that night. And uh, the cops came then the day after with a big thing of um, identification of all the people living in those apartments. Sure, I spotted him straight away, like, yeah. and I was like, I was fucking delighted. <laughs> and was he known to the police? He was known to the police for picking up prostitutes, so he was known for picking up prostitutes. So, God only um, knows what he was doing to those women. I know, like, he could have been doing that because, like, prostitutes tend not to report stuff like that because mm. it's just that it's just like an occupational hazard. And mm. like, I, I know from working in addiction home services in Cork, you know. That sex workers are yeah. exploited and abused all the time. They don't they don't report it because yeah. they're the most vulnerable. And a lot of the time, exactly the police like. have no interest in helping prostitutes. You know, know. was it so sad? So, like even though like if he was not if if he was carrying on like that and he was known for picking up prostitutes, he'd probably a sexual predator. You know, for years. Yeah. Mm. You know, yeah. You're actually very lucky. He didn't hurt you badly. Like I know, and like, 
I kind of, like, I found it, I knew then afterwards that he, he didn't, like, I kind of, in my own head, I knew he didn't rape me. Do you know that kind yeah. of way? Because you kind of know if you have kind of sex yeah. or whatever, but I kind of wanted to black it out of my head yeah. as well because I didn't want to think that he was after doing that to me. Yeah. Do you know? So, yeah, I was fucking deli- delighted. Like, I couldn't believe it that we actually found him, like, mm. and, do you know, so, like, all the drama then of kind of, you know, telling my family at home and stuff. How did they take like it? Ugh, sure. Sure. They were just worried about me, like. Of course. Four brothers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sure, they just yeah. wanted to fucking kill come him. over and kill him, like. Mm-hmm. Um, but I actually, like, they wanted me to come home. And I actually refused. <laughs> um, I didn't want to to wreck the whole yeah. experience that I had and I was, give that my holy. visa was until the end of the year and I think I wasn't ready as well to actually come home and face everyone do you know because when it actually happened I decided that I wasn't going to keep it a secret or mm. do you know it wasn't going to be brushed under the carpet or whatever yeah. so like my whole family told my whole family and my close friends and all my mates that were in Melbourne just cause to be aware of the dangers and mm. do you know fuck it like do you feel can really, happen to anyone do you feel relieved that um that he didn't have sexual intercourse with you yeah like would you know yeah There's oh fuck yeah it's like yeah. a different form. It's, a, it's like a different... Um, like to... Uh, different side of things. I just woke yeah. up and he was down there. Like, yeah. and, uh, so, uh, and I don't know how long he was yeah. there. Because I just froze. But I was oh, delighted when I mm. knew that it wasn't... And this guy done all like, this in his own senses. Like, no, yeah. yeah. Back at his own home yeah. and all. Yeah. No, he didn't give a shit. Like, mm-hmm. No, he's probably after he doing told, that. He actually told the cops that I wanted it. Like... He said mm. you wanted it. Uh, was he convicted? He wasn't because I couldn't go through with it in the end. Um, it took about a year. Like, we caught him and everything and they put him on the sex register. And the cops, they asked me, like, did I want to prosecute him? And so I came home in the... I came home that December. And it was about February. Like, I got on really well with the... The cop, he was lovely. He was like a detective sergeant. Mm. He was lovely. Like he used to ring me and everything from Oz to see how it was. And um, he was like, what do you want to do? And he goes, do you want to prosecute? Do you want to go? Like I would have had to come back to Australia and go to court. And I kind of read up on sexual assault cases in Oz. And... It doesn't, they don't get convicted, like. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's a bit, do you know, you'd be, like, putting yourself through fucking people badgering you, going, it's probably, you know, I just couldn't, I yeah. was like. It's like the one crime where the victim is put on trial as well. Mm. Yeah. Because the victim, the defence sure, will go through even your whole that character. that goes through my own head, like, I'm there going, Jesus, did I fucking, do you mm. know did I encourage him or but it's like no I didn't it was like I go out in the night to enjoy myself I don't even go out in the night to like if I scored with a fella I'd be like happy days but yeah. uh, like it wouldn't I no. go out to have the crack yeah. and I know this is like 68 7 year old men would be like no have you any <laughs> advice for girls and women out there um, that might be drinking like that today um, yeah. and might be have this idea that oh she went through that but should it never happen to me it will uh, it, it could and it could happen to anyone anywhere like in a village do you know it is it was over like I was I was very drunk like do you know I was intoxicated I'm sure I didn't know what was going on and I just I don't know, the mix of your drinks, stick to one. Yeah, <laughs> and you're, you're entitled to be drunk, like, you're entitled yeah. to be lying or aided. I know, That's yeah. not an invitation or consent in any way, shape or form. Yeah. You know, and even if 
like even if you were paralytic and you jumped into his car mm -hmm. and willingly went to his home that's still not consent you know what i mean yeah and the, like if, the way you come out of his gaff and got into the car that you thought was a taxi you could have come out of the nightclub and got into a car thought and he could no, have taken yeah. advantage of that you know what i mean but still like it's still fucking sexual assault you know what i mean know, but it's in your own head you're going fuck it why did i, I know. you know i think irish people are notorious for beating themselves up no matter what whether the circumstances are not their fault or not we're just we just have that bred into us that we yeah. blame ourselves no matter what for whatever situation you know whether it, it's just a shame thing it's a shame it's yeah a shame. No, well, yeah you actually, it, jesus like you know it's like oh man am i gonna go home now like <laughs> did you do any therapy or anything i did yeah yeah when you come home when i came home yeah what kind i went of to yeah. i actually went to the rape crisis center in cork yeah and there were they were excellent as well now I must say they were because I I kind of lived at home I went back home to my mum for a while and yeah no, it was, it was tough like when mm. I actually came home it felt like I had uh, kind of revisited it all again mm. and just facing your family as well as mm. big do you know you're kind of feel like you let them down kind of job <laughs> like like mm. Christ but sure they were they were brilliant and I kind of got counselling then as well um, because I I kind of I kind of suffer from I kind of get highs and lows so it's kind of called um, uh, rapid mood cycling disorder so uh, I only got diagnosed with this now last year but I think in the time that that happened I was going I was in a manic state like I was going through a bit of a manic Mm. episode so because when when you're kind of manic you can you want drink mm. like you kind of stimulants like yeah and i was definitely I, like looking back now because of the counseling yeah and like i went to went to the doctor and they recommended me to a psychologist and so i think like looking back now i'm there going i could have been in a manic stage around that time as well mm. So that condition predates the sexual assault? Um, it, yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. So you I kind of only just figured this out recently. Yeah. I've had highs and lows all my life. Does that make sense for you now? It, yeah, it does a bit. Like mm. You know, I think it kind of did with the drinking. Like mm. What was the drink. drinking today? Not too bad. Like I've definitely calmed down and like I wouldn't, I don't mix the drinks anymore. No more shots of No alcohol. shots, lad. <laughs> <laughs> no more shots. Like, I don't need drink now, kind of. Asher, not too much, like, but... Yeah, it's just yeah. A, a sociable mm. drink. Sociable drink, yeah. 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 And um, what was the mental health, then? Is there any, like, post-traumatic stress or anything like that? Do you have nightmares? Do, does you have flashbacks? No, in fairness now, actually, kind of... I talked it out, mm. you know, with the counsellor. Talked it, talked it, talked it. And yeah, it kind of, I kind of put it to bed. I was like, do you know what this happened now? I've only, like, I met my husband um, the December when I got home at House Party. <laughs> and sure, we're married now, like, two years. And like, I, I had only one other person since that incident. Yeah. So it did kind of. I found it hard to yeah. be intimate with people. Trust or be intimate, yeah, yeah. yeah or trust, exactly. yeah, yeah. And yeah. I suppose your husband must be a great man. He is. Yeah. He is, he is. And congratulations great on patience. the wedding. <laughs> is there any smileys? <laughs> Just one. Many. Just one, yeah. Rua. Oh, so yeah, it Rua. does work out. <laughs> Rua. Rua. Red Rua. Yeah, but I don't know my advice for anyone who's gone through any kind of sexual assault. Report it or tell, tell someone don't don't keep it to yourself like because mm. it'll it'll eat you up yeah and know? in the services in Cork, the rape crisis center they're based yeah. in saint patrick's key yeah in the city center the sexual health center as well in Cork, mm. um and even your local community services um, it they'll is all post. Like, mm. i kind of thought you know because it was uh, an oral rape like you know it's not any less than anything you still didn't yeah. consent it so i'd say a lot i'd say a lot of that goes unreported yeah you, know, you wouldn't hear much you don't like no no 
would yeah. would look um you lift yeah. it held the tail thank you i'm well done a yes, brave yeah. woman uh, georgina um, thanks that, like your story and i could see the emotion in your face i can relate yeah. with the waking up yeah uh, after blacking out yeah. and thinking what happened oh, you know i'm yeah, waking sure. up with waking up in cells and waking mm. up with blood on you and waking up you know yeah. with fucking yeah. missing our white coats yeah yeah just waking up not knowing oh, yeah. what you've done the yeah. night before just you know, and, and, and you're waiting for something to tell you what you have to do, you know, because it's just it's with me when I had a drink, it was just complete blackout. Yeah. A complete blackout. I, I wouldn't know where I am or what I'm after doing until until the next day. You know, where you wake up either on in a bush or a, a, a bag of black bags yeah. or a cell, you know, Scary, covered like, in blood, just. fucking you know it's just it's, it's ridiculous like in the fear of something like that it's just kind of mm. it's, it's, it's yeah i'm even getting the yeah feel yeah. like i'm getting the chill there, you know i'm getting the adrenaline yeah. there like but if you're drinking of, if you're drinking to the point where you're blacking out you've 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 answers now as to why you were kind of doing that but yeah. if you're drinking to the point where you're blacking out you're not remembering that's when you really need to be asking yourself what am i actually doing here mm. yeah because that's not um that's not yeah. normal behavior. That's that's very dangerous behavior. That yeah. No, it doesn't it doesn't excuse anything that you, you yeah. sh- still shouldn't have been sexually oh. assaulted. Yeah. But people that black out like me, Timmy, mm. and yourself, you end up in situations where you've no control over them. Mm. You know, yeah. and you have to mind yourself. And if you're Definitely. drinking, if people that are watching this are drinking to their blacking out, it's just maybe maybe say it to somebody, seek out help. If somebody thinks they've been sexually assaulted. Go and say it to somebody and seek our help and find out. Um, yeah. Um, if people want to show you love, can they do that online? Yeah. <laughs> Instagram. Yeah. I'll yeah. tag you. I'll um, yeah. I'll leave your uh, handle yeah. in the description of the video. Thank and I thank you uh, uh, from thank the bottom you. of my heart for coming on thanks and being so brave and thank honest. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're more than welcome. Thanks and um, thanks to Timmy. Cheers. Thanks to Roman and the Dex, Georgina, and we'll see everybody again next week. Thank see you. See you later. Bye. Thank you.